Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to connect your Mac to the OWC Jupyter Callisto on its own network using a static IP address. This method has the Callisto and any connected computers on a separate 10 gigabit network. This will offer the best performance and consistency when using your Jupyter. We've got the Callisto already assembled and plugged in, the 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter attached to our computer, and the appropriate Ethernet cabling. We're now ready to begin. The first step is to plug one end of the Ethernet cable into the right Ethernet port of the Callisto. Next, we need to plug a cable into the Ethernet adapter attached to your Mac. If you're only connecting the single computer, you can simply connect the other end of the cable you plugged into the Callisto. If you plan on connecting multiple computers to Jupyter, you will want to use a separate cable, then plug the other ends of both into a hub or switch. You can now turn the Callisto on. After the Jupyter finishes booting, open your Mac's System Preferences and find the Network Panel. You'll see a list of all your network devices. If you're using macOS Monterey or earlier, you also need to click the lock under the list and enter in your username and password. Select the Thunderbolt Ethernet slot, which should correspond to the 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter. You'll get some information about the connection. Next, click the Details button. In Monterey and earlier, it's labeled as Advanced. Here, there are a number of tabs. Highlight the TCP slash IP tab Change the Configure IPv4 dropdown to say Manually. Next, change the IP address to 192.168.0. And then for the fourth number, we're going to enter 100. But it can be any number between 2 and 254 except for 10. If you're going to add multiple computers to this network, you'll need to use a separate number in this last place for each computer. Numbers between 100 and 200 are usually a safe choice. You will also want to change the subnet mask to 255.255.255.0. Next, click on the Hardware tab and set the configuration to Manual. The speed should be set to 10 gigabit, and the MTU should be set to Jumbo. Click OK, and after a moment, you'll see that the network is connected. To connect to the Callisto, the simplest way is to go to the Go menu and select Network. In this window, you should see an option that says True NAS. This is how the Callisto identifies itself by default. If you have locations enabled in the Finder sidebar, you'll also see it there. If you double-click the icon, you may get a message at the top of the window that says Connection Failed. That's okay, it's trying to connect as a guest which Jupyter doesn't recognize. Go ahead and click the Connect As button. You'll be prompted to enter the username and password. Make sure that Registered User is selected. By default, the username and password are both Jupyter in lowercase letters. To speed up this process in the future, you can also select the option to remember this password. Click Connect and a shared volume named Jupyter should show up in the window. Double click that icon and the volume should mount on your desktop. If for some reason the Callisto isn't seen in the network folder or in the sidebar, or if you just want to skip that step, you can also connect via its static IP address. Go up to the Go menu and select Connect to Server. In the bar at the top of the window, enter smb colon slash slash 192.168.0.10. If you've connected here before, the address may already be there. Click Connect and you'll be prompted to enter a username and password. Make sure that Registered User is selected. By default, the username and password are both Jupyter in lowercase letters. To speed this process up in the future, you can also select the option to remember this password. Click Connect and the volume will automatically mount on your desktop. Either way, once mounted, your Jupyter Callisto can then be used like any attached drive. 
You can now also access Jupyter's software UI for other setup and management options. Open a web browser and enter the IP address of the Jupyter, 192.168.0.10. Hit return and you'll be taken to the TrueNAS login page. By default, the username is admin in all lowercase letters and the password is Jupyter, also in all lowercase letters. Then, go ahead and click the Login button. You'll now be on the TrueNAS dashboard. From here, you can manage your Jupyter settings. For more information on the interface and what you can do with it, you can go to the Settings button in the top right and select Guide. You'll be taken to the TrueNAS Documentation Hub. The version used on your Jupyter storage system is called TrueNAS Scale. There are a number of setups and tutorials available that can help you get the most out of your Jupyter storage system.